Welcome to the Digital Triggers Podcast, where we try to bring you weekly ammunition that you can use in your business now. I'm your host, Sweeney, and today we bring on Spencer Shaw, who is the founder of Podkick.com and the Business Growth Podcast. Now, Spencer is really going to school us in the podcasting world, and the main things that we're going to focus on with this podcast are two audio tricks that can greatly improve the audio of your podcast or any audio recording that you do. One of them is extremely simple and I've never heard of it before and it's using a free software. Definitely worth listening to. Also he's going to go over what kind of guests he likes and how he brings them on board as well as how you can score guests using high value feedback. Really focused on podcasting with this weekly ammunition. Check it out. Just go through. A big tip is before you start recording, leave a good five seconds of clean, dead air. So, like, or at the very end, leave a good five seconds of clean, dead air. Because there's every room has a sound to it. So, once you've got that gap, that clean, dead air where no one's talking, but it's got the ambient noise, you go into Audacity and go to the noise remover and you can take a sample of that clean dead air and then you say okay here's what the room sounds like now you select the entire track and you say take all of that away and so all of that you know like when you record on a laptop you get that like really hissy sound like a gain and you can tell like you're on a laptop kind of sound audacity will take all of that away just by that simple move and then you go through and then normalize it and then compress it so it takes your file from being like really flat and thin to like beefing it up and then the biggest things are like improving the equalization the EQ so what makes your voice sound better is the bass and especially like for your microphones if you have a microphone you like if you're using a headset you want the microphone to be below your lips almost at your jawline and you want your microphone to sit below you as well because you get a, 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 a deeper sound out of your chest cavity and from your jawline coming out. Whereas if your microphone's up higher, it's going to be really nasal sounding. So what you're going to do is you go into Audacity and you're going to find your, your like five seconds of dead air. You select it. So you highlight that. And then you go to Noise Removal. And then you're going to get the noise sample, I believe that's what it's called. And so it's going to sample what that sound is. And then you go through and then you select the entire track. And then you do the noise removal. And then you uh, apply the settings that you already uh, created with that sound preference. Is I, I personally love the people that most people don't know about. Because, and that are getting real life results. Not necessarily that they're a good teacher, but I want to know about the results so that I can take their framework. And so I'll, I'll use Scott Paul, for example. Uh, I interviewed him. I doubt anyone on in our conversation knows who Scott Paul is. But Scott created a company called Armor Interactive. And if you've ever been to any trade shows, like CES or any trade show, and you've seen those iPad enclosures, you know, like those metal cases that an iPad sits in? He invented that, and he created it. The company is worth millions upon millions and millions and millions of dollars. I mean, he's got a ton of employees. I've been through his factory. It's awesome. And I love meeting with people like him and hearing how he built that company and what he did, and he actually recently exited and sold that company. And now he's working uh, on a project with uh, some billionaires, like some Russian billionaires. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so it's that kind of stuff. That's what I really want to know. Now, how do I find those people? Well, um, TechCrunch, Hacker News, that's where a lot of interesting people are. Uh, it's people that I associate with. And so I ask friends, who do you know that's really interesting that I don't know or who do you know that's really interesting that most people don't know? I want to know that kind of stuff. Because, you know, getting on the, the most guests, you know, like the doing the rounds, 
you know, like you've done like I, I've done it enough that I'm like, oh, yep, here's story number one. Let's hear it. Okay, and and they get to be the point like they want it very scripted. Like you need to ask me these questions, and here's what I'm going to promote. And you're like, oh, I really don't want to do this. So it, I guess I'm kind of it's it's kind of like the uh, old school like going on a on a radio show when someone does a tour, like a book tour, mm -hmm. and they basically give the same 15 to 20 minute conversation to every single radio show. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it is a lot that way. And that's why, you know, I've tried to be disruptive and not do that and provide a unique perspective. Um, now the tools, followup.cc and reportive, reportive is big to be able to see who that guest is. And there's some hacks you can do with reportive. Reportive is a Gmail extension for everyone that doesn't know. And what you can actually do is you can guess, like say it's a person that is really hard to get in touch with or you're not connected to them, you can guess what their email address might be. And you can type it into Reportive and their profile will show up. Now you've got their real email address that's connected to their Facebook and their Google and LinkedIn. Um, but overall, the very best way to get guests is to get the implied endorsement. You know, that's back to Cialdini's influence. You know, if if you know someone that I if you know someone that I want to interview, it's going to be far more leveraged and happening if I go through and say, "Hey, Sweeney, can you introduce me to this person?" But the truth is, if you introduce you know, if, if you ask for it, most of the time, people are thrilled to do the podcast if you spell out the benefits for them. Gotcha. Um, it's, I remember, I'm guessing you're probably familiar with Ryan Holiday. And uh -huh. someone asked him in one of his AMAs, they're like, what's the best way to do a cold introduction? And he's like, don't do a cold introduction. Get someone you know to introduce you to that person. Mm -hmm. And it's... You know, it's funny, cause, but it's one of those things where people are always looking for, like, the easiest route, and it's, well, use what you already have and, and get an introduction somehow, and you're going to have a lot better results. And if you don't have an introduction, well, then don't don't let it deter you from still reaching out. So I'm interested, uh, so you said, you mentioned spell out the benefits, and mm -hmm. then also when you are talking about earlier, um, kind of reaching out to different people and kind of providing this, uh, I'll call it high-value high feedback. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you've ever used that to get a guest. Oh, like absolutely. Said, like, you know, hey, I read your book. I thought these three points were great. It helped me so much with this. By the way, I do have a podcast. Would love to have you on sometime or, you know. Absolutely. That's what happened with Naveen, with Naveen Didakavi. Um We're in a group together, and he was explaining, you know, he was helping a lot of different people answering questions. And so I messaged him and I said, hey, um, and I, I specifically listed out what he did. Uh, what he they said, here is the um, answer you gave and here is what I took action on and then here's the result I got. I really appreciate it. By the way, I have a podcast. If you ever come out with a product or you want to promote your brand, I would love to have you on as a guest, and I would promote you. And he came back, and he's like, oh, man, I'd be thrilled. And I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, in fact, I was really nervous to do, do that one. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? And same thing, like I've interviewed Mike Hill. You know, He's a pretty well-known figure in the Internet marketing world. Um, honestly, Mike's one of the nicest, most humble guys in the world. You know, I, um, and, and I, I remember I was nervous... Jeez, when was that? Back then. And, and I'd even like hung out with Mike. I'd had lunch with Mike before, before the podcast, but I was still nervous. And Mike's like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, you're good at this. He's like, I'm a normal dude. Like, don't freak out. Don't be weird. Um, you know, and, and if you are specific at letting people know how they've helped you and that you genuinely want to help them, they're, they're totally going to be game for it. When you, uh, when you spot the benefits for the, Podcast, is there anything particular you highlight? So you're like, hey, we have this many guests, I mean this many subscribers or listeners, or what do you what's your what's your most point? most people that don't have an ego don't care about that. Those numbers actually never even arise. So does that mean that if you have a brand new podcast, you could get a, an A player guest? Well, possibly. 
um, you have to be able to spell out how it's going to benefit them and um, how you're going to use it. So, for example, bullet point. You know, you want to let them know. Um, I'll give you an example. So, hey, I would love to have you on the podcast. My podcast is for uh, startup founders and entrepreneurs, and it's all focused on business growth. Now, most of my episodes are fall within two sweet spots, between 22 and 27 minutes long, or they're right around 40 to 50 minutes long. So what we'll need to do is plan out about an hour. I'll take care of all the research. I'll take care of all the production. We'll schedule it, and then I'll get you links and everything in advance, and then you'll have full ownership to do whatever you want with that material. This basis is to help our customers. I'm not selling any products. I'm not doing anything that is to take away your brand or tarnish it. It's to help build you, and it's to help build our brand. Now, if you have sponsors, that's fine as long as you, you know, like as long as your sponsorship is in congruence with whatever it is. You know, if it's like a sleazy acai berry product, you know, blah, 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 like, you know, I don't know if that's going to be the best thing for your guests' reputation. But it's like making it easy for them and then spelling it out. Now, in the follow up email after they've said, yes, I want to do it, now you've got more work to do. And that's where you say, okay, great, so here's how we typically interview, and you can say it's going to be on Skype or a Google Hangout or however else you want to do it. If it's in person from an event or local, but you want to explain that to them. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you. What are the best, and then ask them, you know, make sure you're connected on Facebook or LinkedIn and you've done some social cyber stalking or whatever. <laughs> and then uh, from there, that's where Reportive helps. And then from there, what you want to do is you go through and ask them, hey, what cause or website are you promoting? You want to ask them that. And you don't, and this is, I screwed up at the beginning when I first did podcasts. I'd be like, oh, well, how can they learn more about you? Blah, blah, blah. And you shouldn't do that. You should say, hey, you know, this is, you know, his website. Go here. And, um, Another thing is, like, ask them, do you want people to communicate with you through email? Is it okay if I say your email address in the podcast? Do you want people to communicate with you on Twitter? What's your Twitter handle? Things like that. So just it's taking out all of the mystery and doing all the work for them. And then you showing that you've done your homework. If you can do a pre-call, that's good. If they're really busy, then you say, hey, you know what? Um, our recording will probably be, you know, and tell them the time slots. Um, but what we'll do is we'll probably spend a good five minutes getting to know each other before we actually hit record. So letting them know all that stuff. And then if it's video, letting them know it's video. Um, and then letting them know, hey, bring some earphones. It helps out with that sound quality. And it's, it's just taking the mystery out of things. And I know it sounds like elementary, but it's, they really, really appreciate that. All guests do. Now, even if you aren't looking to get into podcasting, I hope that that audio trick can help you for whatever audio you may be recording, whether it's voiceovers or videos. And I hope that his networking talent, you can kind of see where you might be able to use that in different ways. Maybe you're not trying to schedule a guest, but you're trying to reach out to an influencer or trying to get a guest blog poster, and you can still use these similar methods. Now, if you want to listen to the full interview, where we really go deep on how to set up and have a great podcast. So I'm talking equipment and the technical side of things, how to get guests, how to schedule them seamlessly, and promotion strategies that he's used to get into the new and noteworthy section for every podcast that he's launched or helped with. Head on over to members.digitaltriggers.io and you'll be able to check out that full interview. Thanks for listening. I hope you didn't. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to hear more from Spencer, check out the Business Growth Podcast. Have a good one.